All right, then here's our next example of relative velocities. Again, this is not linear motion, perpendicular motion. Um, in this case, not quite perpendicular. Maybe we should call it two-dimensional motion. But let's say that a plane, the pilot wants to fly from LA to Bakersfield with a plane that can fly at 120 meters per second. And let's say for the moment that Bakersfield is directly north of Los Angeles. So if there was no wind, the plane would simply fly directly uh, north until reaching Bakersfield. But there's a wind. The wind is blowing at 60 degrees south of east, or in the direction 60 degrees south of east. So if this is south and this is east, 60 degrees south of east would then be in this direction. So the wind is blowing like this. So what direction should the pilot fly to make it to Bakersfield in one clean swoop without having to make turns and adjustments? So the idea then is, since the wind is going to be blowing them in this direction, like this, at an angle of 60 degrees below the horizontal, so to speak, so theta equals 60 degrees like, like that, then he will have to aim for this spot right here in such a way that when he thinks he gets there, the wind will have blown him right to Bakersfield and he'll be in the right location. Again, the length of the vectors, and this is not a straight line, it should be a straight line. I don't want the pilot to fly it. Uh, crooked like that, so let's try this again. All right, much better. So the length of this one will be 120 whatever units is, it has to be relative, and the length of this vector here will be 20, and so somehow they need to add up to the resultant vector in such a way that the plane will appear to fly straight across like that, directly north. So that would be what we call the relative velocity. And in order to find out what that is, we first, of course, need to find this angle right here. Let's call it theta. What is that angle equal to? Oh, I can call it theta because I called this theta already. Well, let's call it phi. We'll give it a different name. So we want to find the angle phi. So how do we do that? Hmm. Okay, well, notice that the vector representing the speed of the plane has two components. It has a vertical component and a horizontal component. So let's go ahead and draw that over here to the side. So here we have the uh, vector representing the velocity of the plane, which means that the plane will have a velocity in the east-west direction like that and a velocity in the north-south direction like that. All right, so this is uh, the, let's call it v of the plane in the x direction. Let's call this v of the plane in the y direction. All right, now, we also can draw the vector of the wind. The vector of the wind is going to look like this. It's a much shorter vector because it's only 20, represented by 20 meters per second, but this also will have a horizontal and a vertical component. So we can call this the velocity of the wind in the x direction, and this is the velocity of the wind in the y direction. Now, for the pilot to end up at a position directly north from where he started, he would need this vector to be the same as this vector right there. Because in the same amount of time, they should cover the same amount of distance, but in opposite directions. So as the plane is flying towards the west in this far in that much time, then in the same amount of time, the wind should be blowing to the right, to the east, in, uh, like that. So that they need to be equal to each other. All right. So. Since we know the length of this vector right here, this vector is 20, and we know the length of this vector right here, which is 120, and we also know this angle right here, which is 60 degrees, and we're looking for the angle right here, and then realizing, of course, that this vector is the same as this vector right there, so I can go ahead and draw it like that. So this is velocity of the plane in the x direction. We can then say that those two must be equal to each other. So the velocity of the plane in the x direction must equal the velocity of the wind in the x direction. Now the velocity of the wind in the x direction simply is going to be 20 times the cosine of 60 degrees because it's adjacent aside to the angle. So this is going to be 20 times the cosine of 60 degrees. And on the left side, the velocity of the plane, uh, at least in the x direction, as this one right there, will be equal to the hypotenuse 120 times the, and this is the angle phi right here, so times the sine of the angle phi. Notice that it's the opposite side to the angle, so we use sine. And now we just solve that equation for phi, so we say that the sine 
of phi is equal to 20 divided by 120, moving this over here, times a cosine of 60 degrees. The cosine of 60 degrees is uh, 1 half, so it would be 10 divided by uh, 120, or 1 over 12. So we have the sine of phi is equal to 1 divided by 12. That means phi has to be equal to the arc sine of 1 over 12. All right, that we should be able to figure out here with our calculator. 1 divided by 12 equals, take the arc sine of that, and we get 4.78 degrees. So, the pilot wants to make it to Bakersfield, realizing the wind conditions, knowing how fast this plane can fly, he should fly in a direction 4.78 degrees west of north in such a way that he'll get to Bakersfield when he arrives at that latitude. Now, if you want to know how long it's going to take him to get to Bakersfield, let's say that the distance between um, LA and Bakersfield are 120 miles. Also, let's say that's about equal to 200 kilometers. Let's make it a little bit easier. Let's just call it about 200 kilometers. All right. Then, um, how long will it take him to get there? Well, we need to find the velocity along the y direction. And notice, the plane's velocity will be v piece of y in that direction, but the wind will be pushing them back with this velocity. So the relative velocity in the y direction, or in the northerly direction, uh, for the plane, so v relative in the y direction is going to be equal to the sum of these two components. So it's going to be v of the plane in the y direction minus v of the wind in the y direction because the wind, that component in the vertical direction, is actually negative. It's pushing them back. So v p sub y, how do we find that? So over here again, v, CP, v sub p y would be the velocity of the plane um, times the cosine of this angle, right? So this would be equal to the velocity of the plane times the cosine of phi minus the velocity of the wind times, now notice that this will be, this component right here will be opposite to the angle, which is a sine, so V times the sine of 60 degrees. We found phi to be 4.78, so let's plug in all the numbers. V sub P, the, v, the plane would be 120 meters per second times the cosine of 4.78 degrees minus the V of the wind, which is 20 meters per second, times the sine of 60 degrees, like that. Okay, so I'll take the cosine of that angle times 120. So it would be 119.6, that's 119.6. Uh, that would be uh, meters per second, minus 20 times the sine of 60, which is 17.3 meters per second, and so when we subtract that, we get 102.3, 102.3 meters per second as the relative velocity of the plane in the y direction, relative to the ground. And then, of course, you want to know how long it will take him to get there. We can use again the equation distance equals velocity times time, or time equals distance divided by the velocity. So if it's 200 kilometers, that would be 200,000 meters divided by the effective speed of 102.3 meters per second. So take the inverse of that, multiply it times 200,000. So it'll take him 1,956 seconds. You want to do that in minutes, divide by 60, and we get 32.6 minutes. Of course, it's 60 seconds in a minute, so a little bit over a half hour for the pilot to get to Bakersfield from LA under these wind conditions. And that's how you do that problem.